Now it's time to learn the formula for intersite phase clustering or phase synchronization. And I'm actually going to start by reviewing a lot of material that you've already been exposed to in the previous section. So in the section on time frequency analysis. So I'm going to remind you about the phase angle time series and then averaging phase values together, how we average those phase values together. That was from the discussion. In fact, I'm even copying several slides from the videos about ITPC, so intertrial phase clustering, and that will finally lead us to the formula for intersite phase clustering or phase synchronization. So by quick reminder, here is an example of a narrowband filtered signal. And here we have the amplitude time series, which we are not interested in right now for this discussion. What we are interested in is the phase angle time series. So notice that it's going up and down. It looks like it has this sawtooth pattern, but that's because these are phase angles. So they are going around the circle and at two pi, it gets clipped back down to zero. Okay, and then you can also see that these phase angles reflect the timing of the narrow band signal and not the amplitude. And that's important because remember that I mentioned in the previous video when I was talking about intuition of phase synchronization, what we care about is the timing of the relative uh, time series between two electrodes and not their amplitudes. Okay, so it's all about the phase angles here. So this is now a slide and the next several slides here will be taken from the video on intertrial phase clustering. So this was a reminder about how if you want to look for consistency over trials in the phase angle time series, you cannot simply average all of these phase angles together as if they were normal numbers on a number line. And the reason for that is that these are angles. They go around in a circle like this. They reflect these angles here, not lengths in a traditional sense or numbers on a linear number line. And so this was also the example that you saw previously. If we have these two, uh, ang uh, these two vectors here with angles defined by 2 pi and minus 0.1 radians, then the average of these two numbers, you know, if you consider these to be regular numbers, the average is around pi. However, that average vector, uh, or a, a vector defined by the average of these two angles as if they were numbers, would be a vector pointing out this way, which is not the average of these two vectors. So the idea is that we don't want to just average the phase angles together as if they are normal numbers. Instead, what we have to do is come up with a, a vector, and it's a vector in the complex plane, where the vector is defined, uh, or the vectors are defined as e to the i theta, where theta is all these angles, these two here, and then we get the average of these vectors. So we sum up all the vectors together, and then we divide by the number of vectors. Okay, all review here. This is even more review. So then what we are interested in is uh, when we have these unit vectors where the angles, so the lengths are all one, and the angles are defined by the phase angle time series that we get from complex Morley wavelet convolution or filter Hilbert or short time Fourier transform and so on. So we compute the average of these vectors and then we consider the length of the average. And the idea is that the length of this average vector tells us something about the consistency of these phase angles. So when these phase angles are clustered together, then the length of the average is large. And as these fa individual phase angles get more and more distributed around the circle, the length of the average vector tends towards zero. All right, and then I think this is the last review slide. So this is the way we compute intertrial phase clustering. So here we are looking at the consistency of the phase angle time series over different trials at the same time point. And this is all coming from one electrode. So what we do is we take the phase angle from each time point, and then we create these unit vectors where the angles are defined by these angles here. And then we compute the average, and then we take the length of that average. All right, so this was for ITPC. And then here we have the formula for ITPC, and this is essentially what I just explained on the previous slide. We take all the individual phase angles, we Eulerize them, so we put them in Euler's formula, and then we add them all up, and now we're not adding up 
the angles themselves were adding up complex vectors where the length is 1 and the angle is defined by these angles. And then we divide by n and then that gives us the average vector and we take the length of the average. All right, that was definitely enough review of ITPC. Let's get back to quantifying phase synchronization. So imagine these are the narrowband filter time series from two electrodes and these are the phase angle time series from these two electrodes. Now you can already see that there are periods, there are time windows where there is strong synchronization. Like here, there's really strong synchronization. Here, it looks like there's also some pretty strong synchronization. And then, you know, there's like, let's say this time window here, where there isn't much synchronization. Okay, so now the thing is, if you would just look at all of the phase angles from this entire time series, separately for the blue signal and the green signal, those phase angles are pretty much uniformly distributed all throughout phase space. And that is not surprising at all, of course. We are going through many cycles here. There's like 10 cycles that we're going through. So of course, it's going to span the entire range. Okay, but here is the thing. When we are quantifying phase synchronization, we're not interested in the phase angle distributions from either channels alone. Instead, what you do is you subtract these phase angle time series from each other. Literally just subtract. You subtract the phase angles like this. That will give you a typically kind of funny looking phase angle difference time series. It often looks something like this. And then what we do is consider this distribution of phase angle differences. And so for example, you might find that in this window here where visually you see that there is strong synchronization, the phase angle time series are really strongly clustered. So again, the phase angles themselves are individually for each channel distributed basically uniformly all throughout the phase space here. But when you subtract these, you see that their difference is very consistent. And now these steps, it actually looks like these are really, you know, sort of awkward, tall steps here. But in fact, this is just the data going below and above the real axis here. So, you know, these are all values that are a little bit negative and this is a little bit probably over 2 pi here. And that's why you see this seeming gap here. It's for the same reason that you see a seeming edge over here. Okay, and then in this time window here, when we can visually confirm that there is weak synchronization, the phase angle differences in this time window are more uniformly distributed. So not totally uniformly distributed, but certainly you see that the distribution of phase angles is much wider here than it is here. And then, I'm sure you see where this is going, the next step is to compute the average of all of these vectors. And remember, these vectors are difference vectors. These are uh, difference phase angles. So you compute the average vector here, the average vector here. This average vector is going to be really long. Maybe it's like I don't know, 0.9 or something. And the average vector here, I don't know, maybe it would point up here. And maybe that would be around, let's say, maybe 0.3 or 0.4. This is actually still respectable amount of clustering here. Okay, and so finally, that leads us to the formula for intersite phase clustering or phase synchronization. And comparing these two formulas directly, you can see that they are nearly identical. They are almost exactly the same. The only difference is that instead of using the phase angles from a single electrode, we are using the phase angles from two different electrodes, and it's the difference between those phase angles. And this superscript here, J and K, gets a little confusing because here this is a superscript to indicate power, th uh, that is E to the I, and then this stuff. This superscript here is indicating the electrode. So this is the phase angle time series at time point T from electrode J minus the phase angle at time point T from electrode K. Otherwise, you can see the formula is really the same. We're just replacing one phase value with a difference of phase values between two electrodes.